die. So I'm working on a game called Ultimate Chicken Horse. It's a platformer where you build levels that you can beat, but your friends can't. So it's a multiplayer platformer game. You have to build levels. So right now, here's some characters building. Okay, so this video isn't about the whole game. It's a platformer game. So we wanted really tight controls. We're jumping and everything is really easy and feels good. So a big part of that is getting the game feel just right. I want to play as Chicken. He's a little easier to see on this level. Still in early development. So you want jumping and everything to feel good. So to do that, you need to animate it well. And the tool that animators love, at least on computers, to animate stuff well is animation curves. You want to get the curve of the movement of the character looking exactly how you want it to get the feel that you want and to get it to feel responsive and fast and controllable. But when you're coding character movement, uh, there isn't a built-in graph that will show you how the character is moving. So if an animator is looking at it, they can just watch the character move, but they can't see the graph, even though there is a graph built by all the math that goes into making the character move. Uh, so I wanted to visualize that stuff, so I made a simple graphing tool uh, for my characters so I could see how they were moving. Uh, I called it line graph. So I'll just turn on the chicken, his uh, x-axis graph, and the chicken's y-axis graph. So, as I move side to side, the red graph shows my position on the x-axis. And the reason it's like wobbling around in space is because it's being averaged so that it stays in the center of the screen. Otherwise, if I went way over here, it would go off screen and stay off screen. And then you can also see the green graph. Green graph, I'm going to turn off average mode and get it onto the screen. I'm going to change its scaling so that it just looks a little better. There we go. Look at that. Nice. So here's my jump. You can see that jump. I'll put it in slow motion so we can see it a little better. So there's a very nice parabolic-ish type of curve. Uh, the reason that curve is so nice and parabolic right now is because I had this graph while I was tweaking the code to make the jumping feel so good. Uh, before, that curve looked a lot different. Uh, and I'm not going to go into all the tweaking that I did because right now I don't remember it and it's pretty complicated. But I am going to show you the features of this graph. So right now I just have it on uh, the mode where it look, looks at the value of x and y. And that is fairly useful, but it doesn't exactly help you that much to actually make the feel feel exactly how you want. To do that, you really want to be able to look at both the speed and the acceleration that's happening on the objects at any given moment. So I'm going to change the red graph from x-axis mode into y-axis speed. So this means that the red graph now represents the speed at which the character is moving in the vertical direction. I'll change the scale on that so it's a little easier to see. That's better. So let's see, I'll put this in slow motion and maybe it'll be make more sense. Actually, maybe I'll pause it once the chicken has finished his jump. Bam. Okay. So when you press jump right here, the upward velocity goes way high up to jump the full jump speed instantly almost. I think that's the, just a one frame gap. So it just goes bam, right up to full speed up. So the chicken starts going up. He's going up at almost full speed, but gravity is slowing him down. Uh, at this point, or you let go of the jump button, as you can see, this is gravity. It's slowing down, it's slowing down. But then once you get to here, it's actually uh, gravity gets stronger and pulls you down even faster so that uh, your speed down accelerates faster than it was before. And this is something I learned from a book called Game Feel that in Mario and in lots of platformers, going up, uh, gravity is less than it is when you come down. It makes it feel nicer because you sort of like get sucked back down to the ground when you want to be. When you want to like get to the ground to land on a thing, you want gravity to be a little bit stronger than it was before or else it feels floaty and like you have less control. So gravity 
pulls you down faster and faster. It makes this nice green curve, feels good. Then you hit the ground, you instantly stop moving down and you go back to zero. So I'll go to regular speed. So the trick here is that, well, not the trick, but one of the things this let us do in the code, I made a system that would make these graphs pretty much look exactly how I wanted. I could make a code change and then look at the graphs in real time as I played and really see with certainty if the code that I was trying to implement was doing what I thought because I, I understand how to work with these graphs because uh, they're fairly commonplace in After Effects and other 3D packages. So I knew what I was looking for and what I wanted, uh, but the only way to actually get that was to visualize these graphs. I'll just show another one. I'm going to put I'm going to put the x-axis on the green, so this will be side to side movement, and then I'm going to put uh, x speed on the green axis, and I'll move this one up a little. So now you can see. Oop, I guess I want this on average mode, or else we'll never see it. So now red is showing how fast I'm accelerating to the side. So right here I'm doing a little tiny walk to the side. I speed up a little tiny bit at a time. And I can walk and you can see there's my acceleration for my walking. And then if I press X you can actually see the acceleration caused by pressing the run button. Uh, I don't know how useful this is to explain to people because I'm not that great at explaining how I animate or animation to other people, but maybe you can see how this tool would be useful to bring into your games to help you uh, design the movement systems to make stuff feel better. So red is now showing my movement side to side. And if you notice, my movement side to side, the graph is now really smooth, or it is smooth, and that's because there's a teeny bit of momentum and acceleration, deceleration happening. Um, we do have to figure out if that's the best thing to have in our game, because sometimes people feel like they skid around a little bit more than they'd like, uh, which might be a problem. I think we should have a little momentum. But like when you let go of run, this is probably the biggest issue is when you're running and you go back and forth. Look how smooth that curve is. It's not like a zigzag, like a perfectly sharp zigzag side to side. So that means that you like sort of bounce around a little bit. Or you slide around a bit when you're running. If I'm just walking, it's a little bit sharper. So there still is some of that problem. So if I'm jumping and I land on something, I do pretty much stop on a dime, which is what you want. So, yes, if this graph thing is interesting to you, I'm glad that you get to know about it. If not, just believe me that it is interesting and useful. <laughs> okay, that's all for today. If people really want to know more about this graph thing, then I'll try and make a better video about it. Let me know. So, and if you're interested in the game, go to ultimatechickenhorse.com. Uh, next week we're having a Kickstarter, so you can kickstart the game and help us make it even better and bigger and more ultimate. Bye, and now the chicken will dance.